Yeah, it's really interesting because as you say, you're more than welcome to film a student film and have a bunch of aerial cinematography in it uh, because it's just a, a, a hobby project and then go on to win several awards and have theatrical release of that film and make millions of dollars and hey, no problem um, because you were just doing it for fun and that was your hobby. Uh, you know, but, but if the local fire department or search and rescue hires you to come out and try to find somebody that's lost on the side of a mountain on the side of a cliff to fly down there and see if they're okay, oops, now you're not allowed to do that. For the people who don't know you, can you please tell us your name and introduce yourself? Sure. Colin Gwynn, and I am the uh, Chief Innovations Officer at DJI, DJI.com. Now, based in the UAV field, there's a bunch of different laws. Some of them are ridiculous, some of them are rational. State or federal, what do you think is the most ridiculous law, and what do you think is the most rational law currently on the books right now? Okay, all right, so, okay, laws currently on the books or laws being discussed and being voted on? Uh, mostly what's on the books now, so what people should know if they have a DJI Phantom, or if they have another UAV, what should they know? What is the most ridiculous one, whether it's a state or even federal, okay. and what's the most rational one? Okay, so just to throw it out there as a highly ridiculous one, um, you know, the, the state of Oregon wants to make it illegal to even own a flying camera, whether it's a Parrot AR drone that you bought at Brookstone in the airport, or a DJI Phantom, or whatever. Um, it would literally be illegal just to like have it and own it, and then it would be, a, I think, a Class B misdemeanor to fly it. And that's a serious law being being looked at now. It's not on the books. So looking at the books, I think in Santa Monica, the the you know the small little city of Santa Monica, there's a uh, a city ordinance that you just can't fly anything, whether it's a camera or not. And that was their way. There's a lot of very wealthy people in Santa Monica area that didn't want paparazzi flying flying cameras over their houses, and so they just made a blanket city ordinance saying you can't fly remote control aircraft at all in the city. So that's fairly ridiculous to me. Like yeah. if you buy a a little like Horizon Vapor, you know, slow stick little toy, you know, hundred dollar toy plane, you can't go in your backyard and fly it around. That just seems crazy. Um, a law that I think makes sense is uh, something I spoke about uh, this morning was um, uh, House Bill 912 in Texas where we worked with Senator Gooden. That was a law that I would be sitting here telling you about as a seriously ridiculous law uh, if it were to have passed in its original form and how it was originally written, which was to say that any time somebody was in the air and took any kind of photo, if there was any private property being shown, it would be a class C misdemeanor to show that photo anywhere without written permission of every single home in the photo. Even if you're at 200 feet and there was 100 homes in your picture. Um, that would have been ridiculous and would have not helped the UAB industry at all. After working with Senator Gooden and the legislators there, we, uh, or Representative Gooden, we, they adjusted the bill to say if you fly a phantom, with the intent to surveil, with the intent to spy on your neighbor, and you go take a bunch of pictures of your neighbor hanging out by the pool or whatever and put those online, then that is illegal and that's a class B misdemeanor. So I think that makes sense, you know? Um, because we, we're not making the Phantom as a spy device. You know, we're not, we're, our target dealers are not spy shops, you know? Our target dealers are B&H photo and video and Adorama and you know camera shops you know we want this to be an extension of you know another another tool in your bag of of your photography skill set you know um, so you know we we uh, we support those types of laws and I think something like that one makes sense yeah. you know? how did that law in Texas come into play because there's another story behind it that really I think is a positive story of, of UAVs yeah. that really help people that's Can you right. tell us the story behind that? Yeah, sure. It's pretty interesting. There was a, um, a very wealthy landowner slash, um, I guess, uh, pig farm owner. Um, and somebody was flying a, a small unmanned aerial system with a camera on it. And they came down. They were taking some pictures from high altitudes, you know, several hundred feet. Um, they came down and they were looking through their pictures. And they were like, oh, my gosh, what's going on here? And they noticed that there was large amounts of pig blood being dumped into a river in Texas, which is obviously extremely harmful to the environment. Um, and I don't think anyone would support that kind of activity. Well, they let the, the local uh, officials know this landowner was fined heavily. Um, and his argument was, hey, you know, somebody flying their remote control camera was, was spying on my land and I shouldn't be in trouble for 
polluting in this river just because I was found by some kid in his toy helicopter. Um, so he ended up, I guess, still getting in trouble, but then he went to his local representative and said, hey, we need to make a law that says you can't take pictures of people's land from the air with these remote control systems. And so that's where the law came from, which is why in its original form it was extremely ridiculous. Yeah. But um, you know, after, after working with them, we said, okay, if, if you're flying with the intent to surveil, which, by the way, that kid was not, he was flying, he had pictures of this whole area, and it just so happened that one of the pictures you could see the pig blood. So what's great about it is that with the law that was passed, that same flight would have gotten that same guy in trouble for dumping pig blood because it, they just inadvertently saw it yeah. in the photo. Now, if you flew over that guy's land to case his property and took a bunch of photos, then that would be illegal. Yeah. Now, to me, technology is a double-edged sword. It's advancing tremendously. But hearing stories like this, there's a lot of potential with UAVs to do good. Uh, from your experiences, what other instances, or is there a moment or instance that stands out to you where UAVs were used for something greater, for something good, and used for good purposes? Other than just this amazing story that you just shared with us, is there another story that you personally know of that affected uh, uh, Humanity. society, humanity yeah. in a positive way because of a UAV? You know, uh, there's a lot. Um, there's a lot of stories of them being used in, in fires and, and monitoring, you know, when you've got fire departments that are that are in these, you know, heavily wooded areas that don't have an aerial view of where this fire is, where it's going, what the direction is, and being able to use a phantom to pop up in the air and see it really quickly. Um, you know, there's a, you know, there's stories of uh, CNN has a phantom and they were on scene at a, uh, at a, at a hostage situation at this, like, ranch somewhere and uh, no one could go back to, none of the SWAT officers could go back because they didn't know what was around the corner of this house and what it looked like and what the situation was. And you know, the, the CNN guy was like, hey, we've got this phantom that we could fly over there and at least see what the deal is and fly it back. If the guy shoots it, who cares? You know, and they're like, yes, get that thing back there now. You know, we've got these people's lives at risk. Yeah. So they flew the Phantom in, they brought it back, they looked at the video, they could see, okay, this is here, this barrier's here, we can hide behind this. I mean, that's like a, that was a hugely positive use, in my opinion. Yeah. Um, and, but to me, what's almost more exciting and um, I think great for humanity is uh, in education. You know, we've, we've now partnered with several different schools and educators to use things like the Phantom and the Phantom Vision almost as like, the the class science the science classes pet you know it's like what on this phantom vision here can you know what do you teach in science class whether it be middle school or like a general high school science class between Bernoulli's principle and lift and thrust and inertia and magnetism and flow of current of electricity and amps versus volts versus watts of power uh, you know sensors and camera technology and uh, video transfer iOS application development, um, flight control, barometric altitude, GPS, navigation. I mean, there's so many things, you know, between molding and manufacturing and industrial design and mechanical engineering and software engineering. It's like there's so many topics that, that kids learn in school, like amps times volts is watts. And, you know, it's like very academic, yeah. right? But being able to say, now let's take that and look at the phantom. And why does that matter? Because if we go higher voltage, we can go lower amperage, which reduces the heat, which it does this, which does, you know, and, and it's like, now they're like, oh, now I see why that matters, you know? And I, to me, if we can ins inspire, I, I'm a big supporter of STEM, right? And what's great is that, uh, you know, uh, the Phantom, and especially the Phantom Vision, is definitely a STEM product. I mean, it is science, technology, engineering, math, you know? And anything to me that can get kids at a young age really excited about science, technology, engineering, and math, you know, to me, those are the most exciting stories. Even though maybe you're not saving somebody, you're not saving the elephants in, in Africa, which is maybe more important at that moment. But to me, if we could, if we could inspire and, and further educate our, our young people of the world, that I think has a, a much bigger long-term impact. We also heard that the FAA has closed down some of these drone journalism schools. Um, the FAA also has a commercial ban on UAVs. Why are these things happening? I know they haven't been that effective in implementing some of their policies, some of their regulations that they, that they call for, but why is it that 
commercially we cannot use these technologies, but if I use it as a hobby and put it on YouTube to promote what I'm doing, I could still legally still do that. There's many gray lines. Why is that? Yeah, it's really interesting because as you say, you're more than welcome to film a student film and have a bunch of aerial cinematography in it uh, because it's just a, a, a hobby project and then go on to win several awards and have theatrical release of that film and make millions of dollars and hey, no problem um, because you were just doing it for fun and that was your hobby. Uh, you know, but, but if the local fire department or search and rescue hires you to come out and try to find somebody that's lost on the side of a mountain or side of a cliff to fly down there and see if they're okay, oops, now you're not allowed to do that. So obviously there's some areas that really don't make sense. But at the same time, the FAA is in a very difficult spot in that the, the growth of these small and manual aerial systems is exploding. And they are flying around in national airspace um, so they, they have to be very cognizant. I think they are very excited about these systems. They want to make regulation. Um, obviously, we are the U.S. government and we take a long time to make regulation. Um, so, you know, on the one hand, I understand the position they're in. They have to be able to say, as a blanket statement, hey, look, you're not allowed to use these for commercial purposes yet. Now, obviously, they don't strictly enforce that. But their official stance on it is you're not allowed to use these for commercial purposes yet. We are working on regulation. Really, they have no choice but for that to be their official stance. Because if something were to happen, right, and someone's flying some very heavy 50-pound helicopter with a big movie camera on it a 1,000 feet in the air, and it were to strike a small helicopter and cause a, a death or an injury, they have to be able to say, well, our official stance on it was that was not allowed. You know? And so I understand where they're coming from. Um, and I just hope that we can work together to, to come up with some regulations that really make sense. Yeah. The government's not only trying to keep you safe from raw milk, but also the dangers of hazardous and very angry chickens. And then, then we went after him and yeah, it was a crazy scene. Uh, we ended in a parking garage where the guy got maced and uh, worked to the ground and uh, yeah, then he uh, went to jail.